It doesn't matter how beautiful your monitor looks right now. If you haven't calibrated it, it is not correct and you cannot trust the color you're seeing. So that's why we need to calibrate your monitor to make sure that you have absolutely correct color every time. In order to calibrate your monitor, you're going to need an X-Rite calibration device as well as its corresponding software. I have the i1 display and the i1 Pro. The i1 display is small and can travel and the i1 Pro actually can profile your monitor as well as create profiles for various papers. We're going to use the i1 Pro today and show you how to calibrate your monitor and also all the settings and the nomenclature that you're going to run into as you work inside of the i1 profiler or any of XWrite's other profiling software. First, make sure that you have installed the current version of the calibration software to the calibrating unit that you are working with. Now, we're using i1 profiler and on the left hand side you'll see that we have different options for things we want to profile and we're gonna focus on profiling our display. It's important to note that over on the right hand side there are basic options and advanced options. We're gonna start in the basic options and click on display profiling which gives us all the monitors that we happen to be using at the moment. And in this case we're looking at this Dell monitor so we're gonna click on that and then we're going to start looking at our options. The first setting you're gonna run into is the white point. And the white point is going to have settings with the name D50, D55, D65, D75, but the standard setting, kind of the default, is going to be D65 for almost every monitor. What these numbers represent is color temperature. So D65 is 6500 kelvins, which is a normal daylight viewing experience. If you go to D50, that means you are warming up the viewing experience. And what I've found is that D55 is kind of the perfect happy medium for seeing my photographs and also knowing what they'll look like when they're printed. The next setting that we come to is luminance. Now luminance is telling us how bright the image is going to be on our screen. And there's a big difference between looking at a screen that has light shining in my eyes and the reflected light from a piece of paper on which I've printed a photograph. And so we need to find the right setting here that will help to represent what this image will look like when printed. If you happen to not print photographs and they're only going to be seen on a monitor or on an iPhone, then your settings will be different than if you want to look at it on a printed page. But if you want to see what it's going to look like on a reflective surface like a piece of paper, then 100 is a much better luminance level to choose. Now when you get down to gamma, gamma is basically contrast and there is a standard and correct answer for this which is 2.2. There may be reasons to go one way or the other, but generally if you choose 2.2, you will be correct. When we get to the second page or the measurement page, there are several options that you can choose and the first one is the accelerated measurement mode. Don't click that because that's just going to speed up the measurement but it's going to limit the quality so it's a dumb thing to check. The second option is whether we want to have automatic display control or whether we want to adjust the brightness and contrast and RGB gains manually. If you have control over your monitor manually, meaning that you have uh, switches and buttons at the bottom where you can change the brightness and contrast, then you definitely want to go for a manual adjustment so that you can really tweak and fine tune your monitor before the calibration occurs. If your monitor has no controls whatsoever um, and has ADC associated with it, then you can go with that. But most of the time you're just going to choose the manual mode. The first step to calibrating our monitor is to actually calibrate our calibrator. And the, the beauty of the i1 Pro is that it comes with a little base that actually has a perfect white balance tool right there inside the base. So that little white chip in there is going to calibrate this instrument to make sure it knows exactly what pure white is. 
So I'm just going to set this down on the table and set my i1 Pro calibration tool on top of it. Once I've done that, I can click this button here inside the software that says calibrate. I'm going to click on that calibration and it's going to read the white chip inside the base. And as soon as it's done, we will now be ready to calibrate our monitor. Our calibration tool has now been calibrated and it's just a matter of hanging it on the screen and clicking the start measurement tool. So let's just click on start measurement and it's going to instruct me to hang our calibration device on the screen. And in order to do that, I need to actually connect the hanging device with its little corresponding sandbag um, to the device. So I'm just going to click it in like this and now I can hang this over my screen. So we're just gonna hang it like this and stick it right in the middle. And now it's ready to calibrate. Now that I've hung the device, I'm gonna tell the software what I have control over on my monitor. And on my monitor, I actually have control over all three things, the contrast, the RGB controls, and the brightness. So I'm gonna leave all of those checked. You may only have control over the brightness, even if it's just inside of the software settings inside of your operating system. You have control over something. So tell it what you have control over for your monitor and then hit next. At this point, the monitor is going to show a series of screens, white and different colors, and then it will ask you for input where input is needed. At this point, the calibration system wants me to go in and change the red, green, and blue colors on my monitor. And because I have control over that, I just simply access those inside of the monitor menus. So I go to the color menu, and inside color, I'm going to go down to the preset modes where I can actually use custom color. And once I do that, I have red, green, and blue values. And I have to pay attention up here to the color quality indicator lines and move these values down here until I get a green light on those values up there. Our red, our green, and our blue all have green check marks, so we can click next. And now it's asking me to change the brightness levels on my monitor. In my case, it's asking me to move them up, but most cases, especially when you first calibrate your monitor, it's gonna ask you to bring them down because your monitor is way too bright. You can either use the actual controls on your monitor, or if your monitor has no controls, you can use the software controls inside of the operating system to change the monitor's brightness. Now, if you get the green light, but your targeted luminance and your measured luminance are maybe one or two points off, that's quite all right. Just make sure that you have the green checkbox before you move on to the next stage. The calibration software is going to go through 118 different colors that are known to the actual software and it's going to compare it to what it's seeing on the screen itself. Now we're speeding this up for you, but it will go through this process. It'll take about three or four minutes and then when it's done, it will be able to register those colors as a profile and those will become the definition that help your monitor show you true colors. Once the calibration has finished, we simply remove the calibration device from the computer screen. And now you can see that we have the same color swatches we had before, but now there's a bit of a before after or what they were and what they're going to be after calibration. Uh, and that's quite drastic on many of these colors. At this point, we just hit the next button and now it's time to give it a name. Now the software defaults to giving it a name based on the name of the monitor and the date that it was calibrated, which is a great system. Go ahead and use that system. And it, we can ask it to remind us every four weeks to reprofile this monitor. And now we just simply come down to the middle of the software panel and hit save profile. When the software saves your profile, it puts it deep inside your computer in a folder called Profiles and makes a little document called an ICC profile. And that profile is the definition of color for your monitor, and it's what makes sure everything is correct at every step of the process.
And now that the profile has been saved, the software is going to show us what this profile is doing to our color with different photographs of, say, magenta and red and green and blue. On the very top right hand corner, there is a before after switch. So if we want to see what the profile is really doing to our color, simply click before and after. Now you can see there's a slight adjustment to the color. Now the before after on this calibration is not very drastic because I'm constantly recalibrating my system as you should. So there's not much of a difference. So let's compare the original or the generic profile, which is this, which looks fine when you pull it out of the box, but what we really want to see is a profile monitor that looks like this. And that's what you get when you take the time to profile your monitor. You get accurate color, contrast, and brightness so that any image you throw out into the world is going to be accurate wherever it's seen. And I do that by using my color calibration tools from x -Rite.